Mike from Walshed Flats is about to depart. Big play. In 1879, the first passenger train to Pitchy Ritchie Pass in South Australia carried a cricket team from Quorn to the tiny town of Woolshed Flat. Exactly 100 years later, a group of railway enthusiasts celebrated the reopening of the line and a restoration project which had attracted the imagination and dedication of a whole community. In the heyday of the railway, Quorn was a bustling junction nestled at the base of the Flinders Ranges. Yeah, Quorn was a real rip-roaring town. They, they thought it was going to be the greatest inland town in South Australia. But uh, like everything else, economics came into the situation. When the emphasis shifted from wheat to coal, Quorn was bypassed in favour of a more practical route. That was the death knell of the town, and the Pitchy Ritchie Railway fell into disrepair. But in the early 70s, it was given a reprieve, rescued by the Pitchy Ritchie Preservation Society. I wanted it preserved as a monument to those pioneers that built it. I always thought, gee, it would be a magnificent line to, to travel on in a train, even if I have to drive the thing myself. I thought, well, you know, how can I, what can I do? It suddenly hit me. The only way to do it is to create public interest, public awareness, and a stir. Stir they did, attracting the interest of the whole town. Before long, both young and old were at work on the line. I reckon. Oh, the help just came from enormous areas and quarters. Model engineers wanting to play with real things. You'd find uh, pencil pushers who were happy to come up and dig their endless out, you know, digging up sleepers. Professional people in town happy to come up and sweat their little gizzards out, you know. So it's really fantastic. And it's still going on. People say kids don't want to work and they're lazy and everything else, but you know, you spend a day out on the track and and see how good you are. Uh, these kids work their hearts out out there and they enjoy it. Bridges had to be jacked up. You can imagine the, the job that was involved in that. And of course, to lift the bridges meant you had to break the rails, which meant undoing the, the lines. And then there were so many sleepers had to replace, hundreds of sleepers had to replace. The joints had to be packed and lifted. It was just an incredible amount of back-breaking work. We worked day and night on this railway line to get it going. As the society started to actually do things, to carry out working bees on the track, to actually start preserving items separate from the railway, and this is where it spread, we started to acquire rolling stock of one sort and another. Slowly, life was restored to the old carriages.
The next step was to get them back on the rails. In this enterprise, everyone can be involved, even learning how to fire and drive the engengines. I've sold tickets, I've sold souvenirs. The only thing I haven't done, I think, is driven the loco. But I like steam trains. There's something very exciting about them. I wanted to know how they ticked. And I felt that to be a fireman, I was going to learn how they ticked. And the more I've learned about them, the more interesting they've become. the people who were learning to operate the locos have been trained by grow women and it's their experience over the years that have made the whole thing possible because there are no manuals on how to drive a steam loco these days. People are learning new skills up here and we're extremely grateful. In just six years, the Pitchy Ritchie Preservation Society restored 32 kilometres of tracks, replaced over 10,000 sleepers, renewed a bridge and put three locomotives back into service. A coffee pot, or as it was originally called, a steam motor coach, was the forerunner of what we today know as a rail car. Except instead of having a diesel engine or a petrol engine, it was steam powered. It looks good enough to be able to restain and revarnish to its original state, which is one of our aims is to reproduce the coffee pot exactly as it was in 1905. For the people of Corn, the restoration project has been a labour of love. When you get on an engine and you can feel it pulsating with that power that's in that boiler, you know, it, it does. It feels like a, a living creature. Let's face it, all of us are little children at heart when it comes to steam engines or trains. And I think this is why it gets so many people in. Really, it's put one back on the map. Putting Australia's steam history back on the rails has been an important community event in the outback town of Corn and brought to life a small part of Australia's railway history.